Welcome to the Solar Clips video series covering the basics of solar photovoltaics or solar PV. My name is Drew Chavon and I'm an extension specialist with the University of Maryland. In previous videos we've explored how to size the wires for a solar electric system and also how to rewire the junction box or the diodes on the back of a solar panel. We've seen how to assemble PV wire and their connectors and even how to wire a solar combiner box or a pass-through box. But now in today's video we're going to see how to wire or connect multiple solar panels together into a series configuration and also explore some reasons why we might opt to wire the panels together in series with one another. Now solar panels are said to be connected in series uh, whenever they are daisy chained together into a single line. Now for solar panels connected in series the current will be the same at all points within the circuit. And this is because the current generated by the first solar panel must pass through the second solar panel and the third solar panel and so on and so on having no other pathway to follow. Let's assume this circuit for instance has a common current of 5 amps flowing through the string of solar panels and then the current will flow through the positive output. So again for this example 5 amps would be the maximum current flowing through the string. The voltage of the system on the other hand will increase across the string. That's because in a series configuration like this the voltage of each solar panel will be summed together. So connecting these four panels in series let's say with each panel having an output of 20 volts would result in a total system voltage of 80 volts which is simply 20 volts from each panel times four panels. And from this we can see how quickly voltage adds up in a series configuration even to the point where it could exceed the acceptable threshold of an electrical load, uh, a charge controller, or an inverter that may be connected downstream of the solar array. So if you are connecting solar panels in series then you have to make sure that whatever electrical component that you attach downstream, um, like a charge controller, you have to make sure that can actually accept the higher voltage that's coming to it. Now one disadvantage to connecting solar panels in series can arise if a solar panel becomes faulty, damaged, or partially shaded. Even if only one photovoltaic cell in the panel is shaded, this will equally affect all of the other cells in the panel that are connected in series, causing significant power loss for the whole panel. So even if the majority of that solar panel is receiving full sun and operating properly, the output of the whole solar panel can be dragged down by that one faulty or shaded cell. Now there's also the risk of overheating and potential damage to the solar panel whenever the full current from the functioning portion of the panel passes through that faulty or shaded cell. These destructive effects can however be circumvented with bypass diodes. Bypass diodes are installed in parallel but with opposite polarity to a grouping of photovoltaic cells within the panel. Under normal operation each photovoltaic cell will be forward biased while the diode will be reverse biased being an open circuit. If a photovoltaic cell is reverse biased on the other hand due to a mismatch in the short circuit current between the cells then the diode will conduct or allow the current to flow through the external circuit rather than forward biasing each good cell. So in this way the diode will effectively cut out that part of the panel that's receiving less sun while the rest of the panel will still perform at 100%. Now an individual panel will affect the entire series of panels in the same way that an individual cell will affect the entire solar panel. If only one solar panel in the series has shading on it for example then the output of the entire series of solar panels could be reduced. The impact on total system voltage may be minimal in the case of a relatively small voltage drop in one of the solar panels but there may be a more significant impact on current. Since total voltage is the sum of each panel's voltage it's often easier to achieve the minimum voltage that might be required for a component that's located downstream of the series of panels, even in periods of low solar irradiance or shading. A significant reduction in the current, however, could have a more profound impact on the system's power output. This is important whenever you're working with something like a solar charge controller, for instance, that would need to receive a minimum voltage for it to operate and that minimum voltage could be reached relatively quickly by connecting the panels in series as opposed to a parallel configuration. If, on the other hand, you had a faulty solar panel in the series with the panel having a low internal resistance and a reduced output, then your total system voltage could potentially drop below the voltage that's required for any component that's located downstream of the array. 
And these are just some of the reasons why it's important to avoid even partial shading across the cells of a series connected solar panel. Despite these challenges, this video is simply going to address some of the basic reasons why we might opt for a series configuration. Now, ultimately, the configuration that you choose for your system, uh, either series, parallel, or a combination thereof, it's really going to depend on what type of system you're, in, you're installing, uh, what the application of the system is, and what type of components you have attached to the system. Uh, but in general, the benefits of a series configuration really has to do with the need to increase the overall voltage of the system. You may see somewhere between 9 to 12 solar panels wired in series on a typical grid tied system, for instance, in order for the inverter to turn high DC voltage from the solar array into 120 or 240 volt AC power that could be used in a home. While a 100 watt solar panel like this one could be used to charge a 12 volt battery, charging a larger battery bank like 24 volts or 48 volts, uh, for instance, would not be possible since this panel's nominal voltage is only 12 volts. So to charge a larger battery bank, again, something like 24 or 48 volts, you would need to use a string of solar panels connected in series. Again, since this 100 watt solar panel has a nominal voltage rating of 12 volts, we would need two panels to charge a 24 volt battery bank or four panels to charge a 48 volt battery bank. In those instances, we could turn the nominal 12 volts into either 24 or 48 volts, depending on how many panels were connected in series. A series configuration may also work well with solar panels having different voltage levels, particularly those systems using a MPPT charge controller. The voltage of each mismatched solar panel would simply be summed together without any voltage loss. Some series configurations may also require less fusing than parallel configurations, often with a lower risk of fire hazard uh, that may arise from a faulty panel. Now for this video, we'll be using some 100 watt solar panels like this, and we'll simply connect or wire four of them together in series. But before we make any connections, let's look at some of the important information found on the back of the panels. In this case, we'll see the solar panel has a maximum power P max of 100 watts, an open circuit voltage VOC of 22.6 volts, and a short circuit current ISC of 5.86 amps, all reported under standard test conditions, or STC. We can also see the panel's junction box on the back of the solar panel, where the positive and negative leads are connected to the panel. Each of these wires is also equipped with an MC4 connector, which locks together with properly paired connectors. The positive wire is typically equipped with a male connector, but we can always use a multimeter to verify this polarity, as we've done in previous videos. We could also apply some red electrical tape to the positive wire for easier identification. Now before we make any connections, we'll cover the solar panel so that we aren't working with live voltage. We want to avoid any safety issues or potential damage to the equipment, like shorting out the diodes that are inside the junction box. Now wiring solar panels in series is just a matter of connecting the positive wire coming from each solar panel to the negative wire coming from the next neighboring panel, and so on and so on until all of the panels in the string have been connected. So you can see the wiring process is the same regardless of the number of panels that you're using simply connecting the positive wire of one solar panel to the negative wire of the next panel. And this is what it looks like in practice. We'll simply connect the positive lead coming from the first solar panel to the negative lead coming from the second solar panel by pushing their respective MC4 connectors together until they click into place. And now these two solar panels are wired in series. And we'll just continue this process for all remaining panels connecting the positive wire from the second solar panel to the negative wire from the third solar panel and we'll just do this once more to connect the third and fourth solar panel together and this would simply be repeated for as many panels as you need to connect. And then when all the connections have been made, we'll be left with a positive and a negative wire on opposing ends of this string of panels. These two remaining wires will be run downstream to an electrical load, a breaker box, a charge controller, or an inverter, just depending on uh, what your system design is. And depending on the system design, you may need some extension wire if either the positive or the negative lead is too short. You can review a previous video in this series uh, for more information on preparing PV extension wire and their corresponding connectors. But in preparing the proper length of extension wires, just note that the first panel in your string may be at a different distance than the last panel. And for that reason, your positive and negative extension wires may require different lengths. Once the correct length has been prepared for each line, we'll label them with electrical tape. We'll use red for the positive extension wire and white for the negative extension wire, 
as this is a grounded system. Now we'll typically use a pass-through box or some type of adapter before we run each of these wires downstream where they will connect to an electrical load, a breaker box, a charge controller, or an inverter. But in today's example, we'll use a simple combiner box like we've used in previous videos. We'll start by opening the electrical box to reveal some of the fuses on the left, as well as a circuit breaker that can easily be turned off. Just note, you really shouldn't disconnect a fuse whenever it's under an electrical load. Now we'll complete the wiring in this box, much like we've done in previous videos. We'll start by connecting the positive and negative line coming from the string of solar panels to the corresponding connectors that are installed on the side of the electrical box. You could also use strain release to pass through each wire as we've done in previous videos. In any sense, the positive line will be connected at the bottom of the breaker or fuse, while the negative line will be connected to the negative bus bar. And we'll also have a ground wire coming from the racking system that will be connected to the grounding bus bar. Then all the output lines will be passed through strain release on the bottom of the electrical enclosure, where they will run downstream to whatever the next component of the electrical system might be. Now we can verify the output of this series of solar panels using a multimeter like we've done in previous videos. To do this, we'll uncover the solar panels to expose them to sunlight. And now that they're producing power, we can measure the voltage and current. While these measurements could be performed directly with the positive and negative leads coming from the string, we'll take the measurements here inside the box since the connections have already been made. We'll start by measuring the current flowing through each panel by selecting the appropriate current setting on the multimeter. Then connect the negative lead to the negative bus bar and connect the positive lead to the positive input that's fused. In this case, we have a current of 6.24 amps flowing through the system. This value is rather close to the short circuit current, ISC, that's referenced on the back of each panel under standard test conditions, indicating that the current remains consistent throughout the string of solar panels. We can then measure DC voltage by selecting the appropriate voltage setting on the multimeter. Following the same procedure, we can measure the combined output as 88 volts, which is just about the open circuit voltage of 22.6 volts for each panel times four, since we have four solar panels connected in series. And again, this demonstrates how the voltage adds up in a series configuration while the current remains the same. But this also serves as a reminder to exercise additional care whenever you're working with higher voltage systems. Well, I hope this video has provided you with an understanding of how and why you might wire solar panels together in series and how the series configuration will increase the voltage of your electric system. Uh, but in upcoming videos, we'll consider um, parallel configurations and other aspects of stringing solar panels together. Uh, you can subscribe to this channel to stay connected on upcoming episodes of this Solar Clips video series. But in the meantime, please visit our website for more information on solar, photovoltaics, and other energy-related topics.